Hello and welcome back to my 10 favorite people. Hope you're doing well. I'm incredibly excited for today's video because although the market does not expect the Fed to cut rates until November of this year, based on the current Fed futures projections, I actually believe it's very likely they're going to be forced to cut rates way sooner than that because of two major catalysts that we ended up having this week. One of which was the ECB getting started with their rate cuts, and I'll get into why that puts immense pressure on the Fed in a moment. And the second, and perhaps more importantly, was the above expectations print on the unemployment rate that we warned about. For the first time, we officially have that 4% handle. And this is crucial because in their economic projections that the Fed released themselves, in March of this year, they told us their end of year projection for the unemployment rate was 4%. And here we are in June, and we've already hit that number. So who knows how high this is going to be by December. But they also told us their target for the end of year for core PCE inflation, their preferred measure, the end of year target was 2.6. We find ourselves at 2.8%. And yes, it's been stuck here for a while, but it's very close to that 2.6 end of year target. And finally, they also told us their expectation for where they're gonna have the funds rate by the end of the year, which was 4.6. But here we are today in June, still sitting at 5.25. And the market doesn't think they're gonna get below 5% this year. But when you look at what's happening with the unemployment rate based on their projections, I don't think they're gonna be able to keep rates above 5% by December while the unemployment rate is moving up the way that it is. And of course, this is very clearly laid out in the Fed's mandate on their website. Their mandate is to promote maximum employment and stable prices. So just because inflation is still a bit above their end of year target, they're not going to be able to justify keeping rates where they are while the unemployment rate continues to go up and millions of people continue to lose their jobs. And I think they're going to start facing immense political pressure now that the unemployment rate is above 4%. And we're also going to get into why it's incredibly likely we're going to see a recession in the near future. I know that everybody rolls their eyes when they hear that word now because we've waited so long for this recession. But I'm going to go over some very clear signs as to why it's very likely the Fed has to start doing something very soon because recession is all but guaranteed at this point. But because the market right now is not expecting rate cuts in July, really, if they end up doing those rate cuts sooner and the market starts pricing in those rate cuts being sooner, it could be the perfect catalyst and narrative for one last blow off top for Bitcoin and other risk assets. This window for the left translated cycle theory is shrinking very quickly now that the labor market is weakening at the pace that it is, but there's still a chance that maybe excitement around that first rate cut and one last squeeze over the next two to three months could be our last opportunity for that left translated cycle and that last blow off top move. Otherwise, it's likely just gonna be a regular cycle where things take a lot longer than investors currently expect. And of course, this is because we know that the Fed's monetary policy has a huge impact on Bitcoin. We bottomed when they slowed down hikes. We absolutely took off when the Fed paused rate hikes, just like we did in 2019. And I know one data point isn't a ton. Yes, Bitcoin did end up selling off when the Fed cut rates in 2019, but it was a completely different hiking cycle. And it's only one data point because back in 2019, rates didn't get anywhere near as high as they got recently. But more importantly, the unemployment rate was going down throughout 2019 and never saw the basing then increasing effect that we've seen in this current hiking cycle. So I don't think we can get too much info out of looking at Bitcoin's reaction to monetary policy because we have one data point, but the story looks a lot more concerning when you look at the S&P 500, which of course is kind of our flagship risk asset to watch. And we know that Bitcoin and the S&P 500 have been very correlated historically because of course Bitcoin is just further out on the risk curve from the S&P 500. And the data for the S&P 500 is pretty convincing. After the dot-com bubble, what do you know? The unemployment rate was basing out and once it spiked above its two-year moving average, we entered recession and the Fed tried cutting rates to get ahead of that, but risk assets sold off. 
Same thing in the great financial crisis. You get a basing effect in the unemployment rate, then a spike above the two-year moving average. Once you get above your two-year moving average, recession is around the corner. Fed tries to cut rates to get ahead of that recession risk assets sell off. But of course, in 2019, you don't end up having that base effect, then major spike above the two year moving average on the unemployment rate. So the S&P 500 is able to just ignore the Fed beginning rate cuts because there's no recession around the corner and it's able to continue higher until, of course, we get hit with a black swan event and a global pandemic, which causes everything to sell off across the board. But I do think that's why 2019 was such a different cutting cycle than 2008 and 2000. And of course, that main differentiator on whether or not we get a recession is what's happening with the unemployment rate. And if we look at the history of the unemployment rate and its relationship with its two year moving average, there is a 100% hit rate of recessions occurring when the unemployment rate accumulates at a level and then gets above its two year trend. Of course, here we have the unemployment rate in purple and its two year moving average in yellow. We just got above that moving average recently in late 2023. And of course, if we go back in time and go back to what happened in great financial crisis, we get above the two year moving average. And what do you know, two to three months, we're in a recession. Same thing with dot com bubble. Same thing in the 90s, we get above that two year moving average, we're in a recession. Same thing in the very early 80s, same thing in the 70s, above the two year moving average recession, above the two year moving average recession. And it is just crazy how consistent this is, which really tells us that the most important data point when it comes to economic health is the labor market. And unfortunately, every time we've seen this type of accumulation and then break above the two year moving average, recession has been around the corner. But I think unfortunately, so many people are so tired of hearing the word recession, they don't believe it's gonna happen at all because they missed out on so much opportunity investing because the recession was expected to happen last year. But of course, the federal government was able to kick it down the road via these massive deficits we've been running over the past two years or so and how we've kept the labor market afloat for as long as we have, even with the Fed having interest rates as high as they have been. So that was my first catalyst for why the Fed has to start cutting rates sooner than the market expects because the writing is on the wall. We're above the two year moving average and the unemployment rate is trending higher and we're already at their end of year target. Now, the good news is we're going to get an updated economic projections on Wednesday, June 12th. We only get these economic projections once every three months. So we'll see what that number says for their end of year projection by then. And of course, they're going to update their inflation and Fed funds rate projections. Also, that's why this is probably the most important release to watch when it gets released at the end of each quarter. But it's very clear to me that they're going to face immense political pressure to start cutting rates the same way they faced so much pressure when inflation was spiking to start hiking rates aggressively because of how upset everybody was getting with the rate of inflation increasing and the prices of everyday things going up. So that was catalyst number one. As for catalyst number two, I know a lot of people think the ECB's monetary policy doesn't matter because it mostly impacts Europe and the Fed has way more impact on the global economy and of course, US markets and risk assets especially. But the reason why the ECB cutting rates puts a timer on the Fed is because the ECB cutting rates to weaken the Euro ends up strengthening the dollar and puts quite a bit of tightness on global liquidity because we know that a very strong dollar and this dollar index rallying aggressively tends to have an inverse relationship with risk assets. And this is, of course, because dollar strength has a huge impact on liquidity. And this is obviously because of what makes up the actual dollar index currency basket. The dollar index is priced 58% in euro and another nine-ish percent is from the Canadian dollar. And what do you know, both of those central banks cut rates this week. Of course, we already talked about the ECB doing it, but the Bank of Canada did it as well. So now you have two of the currencies in this basket and almost 70% of the baskets waiting getting weakened by those central banks lowering their respective interest rates, which of course, because they make up so much of the dollar index, 
puts upward pressure on the dollar, which tightens liquidity. And I think that's also going to force central banks and countries around the world to start putting immense pressure on the Fed to lower rates also, because if they don't, the dollar is going to strengthen immensely and tighten liquidity. And maybe the Fed wouldn't mind that on its own too much. But when you add the added pressure of the unemployment rate here in the US going up, I think it's a lot harder for them to ignore both the pressure coming from the constituents here in the US, but also from central banks and countries around the globe that get punished by the US dollar strengthening because their debts in dollars become that much harder to pay off. So anyway, dollar index going up isn't that bad for the Fed because it means stronger dollar and more demand for US bonds. However, when you combine that with the weakening labor market and the unemployment rate going up, I think that's what's going to be what forces the Fed to cut rates sooner and more aggressively than everybody currently expects. It's unfortunate that that's likely to happen, even with CPI still sitting in the three-ish percent range. But because their mandate is both employment and stable prices, I don't think they can ignore the employment part any longer just to keep fighting inflation now that it's already so much closer to their target than it was before. So of course, we'll see what happens and we'll see if I end up being right on that. Of course, we're gonna continue to monitor the relationship between the Fed monetary policy and Bitcoin. We only have one data point as of right now and we're gonna be getting a second one soon. I still think a normal cycle is by far the most likely because I don't think the excitement and demand needed to send Bitcoin a lot higher in the short term is quite here yet. Maybe a rate cut could be that catalyst if it comes earlier than the market expects and before we end up getting hit by that recession. Funny enough, if we look at the S&P 500 in the uh, great financial crisis, it was actually able to go a tiny bit higher before rolling over as we entered that recession. But when you actually zoom out and start talking about what can we expect over the next five to six months, I think the evidence of recession is just becoming more and more apparent. And I, the sad thing is that I think a lot of people are ignoring the signs because they're so fed up hearing about the recession and all of the opportunity costs that was missed by waiting for the recession to actually hit, including myself. I would have been way more allocated in 2023 if I didn't have the recession concerns that I did. So we'll see what happens, but I think there's a very good chance we might even get a rate cut as early as July, but September would be the absolute latest in my book, especially with, as we mentioned, central banks cutting around the world and that spike in the unemployment rate we saw this week. But of course, let me know what you expect. And of course, we're going to document it all going forward on the channel. But as always, thank you so much for the support on the recent videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.